Oh my god, hello friends. Okay. So I assume you can hear me. Um so oh my I can hear myself. Hold on. How do I do that? Okay. Can we hear me? Okay. Cool. So, uh, yes, I am running a pop VM, uh, but it's a VM. I have Arch. Fear not, friends. I <laughs> had a hidden Twitch window open on my host that was echoing and it scared me. Okay. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is go to uh we're gonna go grab the files that i have created boop and boop yes go there there's a link in the chat friends So, boop, boop, okay, hold on, it's been a very long time since I presented any, okay, boop. so, um, okay, so if you are on a Debian system and you do not currently have NeoVim installed, the package name is NeoVim, and you type our secure password. So, oh, that is a thing. Okay, so, all right, now we can get started. So, NeoVim is a fork of something you may have heard of called Vim. Uh, the point of the reason NeoVim was forked was to kind of modernize Vim and bring in more modern features that you would probably expect in a more modern editor. Um, and it just it cleans up the code base and adds a bunch of features that uh, we will get into later. Oh, hello, Daniel. Um, cool. So step one, if you don't already have it installed, uh, make sure you have it installed. Um, you are going to make sure you have at least version 4.4, which last time I checked was pretty much everywhere. Um, nothing in this talk. <laughs> uh, nothing in this talk is going to use anything. Uh, specific to 4.4 should all be pretty standard stuff. Um, but the really cool stuff about Vim or about NeoVim, like floating windows, I believe were introduced. So you're going to want to make sure you at least have that. Um, something I do is I like to increase my key repeat. Um, so you'll notice that if I hold down J, it types, it takes a long time to start repeating. Um, but if we take this guy, uh, it repeats a lot faster now which is really, really handy for doing things like scrolling around in Vim. Um, if you don't like that, 
this is the default settings. Uh, another thing I do, and a lot of people use Vim do, is where caps lock and escape are on the keyboard. Uh, some people just get rid of caps lock entirely. I like to have it, um, so I keep it around. So now when I press escape, it's saying caps lock, and my caps lock button is now escape. Okay, so uh, what is Vim? Vim, uh, so one of the special things about Vim and NeoVim that confuse a lot of people is actually a modal editor. You can't just open it up and start typing because you start in what's called normal mode, uh, which is where you spend a good chunk of your time. Um, that is where you move around, get to where you want to go, do things like searching, uh, and a couple other things. Uh, visual mode is uh, where you select things, right? Like when you click and drag in normal editor, you can highlight stuff. There's a couple different ways to do that in Vim. Um, insert mode is obviously how you insert new things. And then Vim has a thing called command mode, which is kind of like a little built-in command line, right? So as some of you might be aware, uh, the preferred way to navigate around basically in Vim is with HJKL. So your K key is going to go up, J is going to go down, uh, H is left, L is right. Um, takes a little bit to get used to. Technically, you can still use the arrow keys. Um, it is recommended to learn HJKL. It just makes things a little bit smoother uh, when you really get into it. Um, so over here, I'm going to open up this C file, which is just some C file. Uh, to illustrate some stuff with programming. Uh, hold on one second. Cool, sorry, had to change something. Cool, all right. Okay, so uh, over here, I just have some linked list code. <laughs> uh, I just have some linked list C file that I found somewhere on my hard drive just to demonstrate some of the useful things in programming that Vim does by default, uh, which is a demonstration file, nothing special about it. So um, obviously to move around a character at a time, we have HJKL, right? Uh, Vim also makes it really easy to move around large chunks of the file. Oh, get out of here. Uh, Devin, get out of here. Um, so in Vim, uh, it's really, really easy to jump to the top of the file. So if you're anywhere in the file you want to jump to the top, just tap G twice. It's going to take you straight to the top. Uh, capital G is going to take you all the way to the last line. Um, I have a bunch of blank lines in here for some reason. I'm not sure. This file is like three years old. Um, if you happen to know what line you want to go to, there's two ways you can do that. Uh, colon and then some line number. Or you can type that line number and then a capital G. Right? They'll both take you to that line number in the file. Um, you can also uh, jump to, say, 30% of the file or 5% of the file. And it'll take you that many percent through the file. Um, so side note, this caret here is commonly used to indicate the control key. So if you see a caret and a letter, that's going to be control in that button. So if you press control G, you'll see down here it says that I am 7% through the file. So if I type 25%, now I'm 25% through the file. Um, so if you don't want to jump you know, such large quantities through the file, uh, control D is going to take you uh, half of a page down. And control U is going to take you half of a page up. And then control F is forward a full page. Control B is backward a full page. So just some larger chunks if you just want to like thumb through and just kind of get the gist of what's going on in your file. Um, I have that twice. Okay, so something that I don't particularly use a lot but can be useful, if you press capital H, it's going to move your cursor to the top of the screen. Uh, M is going to move it to the middle of the screen. And L is going to take you to the bottom or the lower part of the screen. Uh, and to kind of go along with that, if you press ZZ 
anywhere, you just have your cursor somewhere and you press ZZ, it's going to make that line in the middle of your screen. So if you're scrolling along somewhere and you say, oh, I want to I want to work on that line. If you tap ZZ twice, it'll move that line to the middle of your screen so you can kind of get some context around it. Uh, Z dot does the exact same thing as ZZ. Uh, if you want to take a certain line and move it to the top, you can press ZT. If you want to move it to the bottom, ZB. Uh, you can also scroll with Control E to go down and Control Y to go up. <clears throat> so something that uh, is a little bit more unique to Vim besides just scrolling around, right? Uh, Vim has a concept of a paragraph. So to Vim, a paragraph is any chunk of text uh, that's not separated by any blank lines. So for example, this right here would be a paragraph. This is also a paragraph. So is this, right? So if you press the left curly brace, it's going to jump by a paragraph, which, you know, if you do some programming, it's pretty common to have a chunk of lines grouped together. So you can move around like that. Um, so that's some good ways to just move around the entire screen. Uh, then there is ways to move left and right on a given line. So obviously we have, you know, L and H, right? Um, so if you press the number zero, that is going to take you to the very beginning of the line, the, the first column, right? If you press the caret, that's going to move you to the first non-blank line. So there's a bunch of spaces here, but if I press caret, it's going to put my cursor on the first thing that's not a space. Uh, dollar sign is going to move you to the end of the line. And then cheat a little bit here. Uh, so there's a bunch of blank spaces right here. So if I press dollar sign, it's going to move me all the way to the very end. And G underscore is like caret for the, for the end of the line. So caret is the first non-blank. G underscore is the last non-blank. Um, another thing that's pretty neat about Vim, let me zoom in a little bit, is the F and T keys. So let's say I want to move up to this exclamation mark. I could hold L to go over there. Or I can say uh, I, like, I want to find an exclamation mark. So the F is going to put your cursor directly on top of that character. Uh, T is going to move until that character, so right before it. So if I type T exclamation mark, it's going to move me right before it, right? Uh, and then the capital versions do the exact same thing backwards. So if I type capital F open parenthesis, it's going to search backwards until it hits an open parenthesis. And then if I do the same thing with a capital T, it's going to put me right in front of it. Uh, semicolon will repeat the previous F or T command going right. Um, I guess I only have, so let's do a T. So let's say I do F T and then I press semicolon, it's gonna find the next T. And then comma, it's gonna go backwards. Um, and percent, it's pretty handy. Uh, it'll actually jump you to the matching uh, parenthesis or curly brace or square bracket, stuff like that. So you'll notice that I'm actually, right now my cursor's right here. If I press percent, it's going to jump me over here. Um, so uh, these things are called motions, which are a motion is just anything that moves your cursor around, uh, as you might expect, right? So these things can also take counts. You can tell how many times you want to repeat that motion. So if I want to jump to, say, this parenthesis, I can say, find the second parenthesis. Oh, two, there we go. So I can say, two times, find a parenthesis. Or I can say, one, two, three. I can say, three FT to jump to the third T. Um, if you guys have questions, you're welcome to stop me. I do have the chat up, by the way. Um, so, correct. Uh, those are left, right. 
So all of these just move you left and right, except for the parentheses that'll actually, if you have like, so if I'm actually on a, uh, hello? Oh, it's because it's split. There we go. So if I'm on this parenthesis or this curly brace, the percent will actually seek to wherever the other one is. It doesn't strictly have to be on the same line. Um, so some of these actually do behave a little bit differently depending on if you have a line wrapping turned on or not. Um, namely, uh, J and K do actually work differently depending on how you have line wrapping set up. Um, didn't I put the help page in here somewhere? I guess not. Um, Vim has a fantastic help page. So highly recommend reading the help page on the motions. I think I have it later in here. Um, so Vim also knows what a word is, which is a very handy thing. So there's two different kinds of words in Vim. There is an uppercase word and a lowercase word. <clears throat> a lowercase word is separated by spaces and punctuation. A capital word is just separated by punctuation. So if I start tapping lowercase w here, it'll stop on the parenthesis and the p and the dash and the n, right? So it actually stops at each section of punctuation. Uh, b will do the same thing, but backwards. Yes, I said capital word is separated by spaces. There's two words, Daniel. Um, <clears throat> so if I press capital W, it skipped from here. Did I? I said a lowercase word was. So a capital word is separated strictly by spaces. A lowercase word is spaces and punctuation. So if I am right here and I press capital W, it's going to jump everything until it hits the space and put me right on that guy. So if you have, say, like an object, like foo.bar, the lowercase w would stop on foo.bar. The capital word would jump over the whole thing. Um, so E is going to take you to the previous end of a lowercase word. Or no, E is going to take you to the end of the words, sorry. So W puts you at the beginning, and E puts you at the end. All right? Um, and GE takes you to the previous end, and G capital E does the same thing for an uppercase word. Uh, so, Vim also has a concept of a sentence, which is uh, basically the same thing as a normal sentence. It's, I have it in here somewhere. Yeah, so a sentence ends with a period, exclamation mark, a question mark. Um, I don't really use, um, well, actually I do use FRT quite a bit. Um, by default, it's a little hard if you have a bunch of repeated letters, like um, up here, like where there's like a bunch of T's or something. Like all these T's, it would be kind of hard. Um, I actually have a plugin that when I press F or T, it will highlight unique ones, which makes it really, really easy. Without the plugin, I wouldn't really use F or T. Um, I typically just use W or like search for something. Um, okay, so a sentence in Vim is delimited by period, exclamation mark, question mark, and is followed by the end of the line, a space or a tab. So pretty much what you would expect a sentence to be normally. Um, I don't really use that one, and I don't really use uh, the, the curly braces for paragraphs either. I use control U and control D quite a bit, though. That's typically how I move around larger chunks. Um, okay, so now that we have kind of a rough idea of how to move around, where the heck? Hold on a second. I need to plug.
plug my laptop in. This is not ideal. Also, here's my charger. Hold on one second. Hold on, I need to plug my laptop in. Small oversight. Okay, we're good now. Okay, so now that we know how to move around, uh, it'd be kind of cool to know how to, shut up agent, um, be nice to know how to actually insert new things once we get to where we want to insert it, right? So there's quite a few ways to get into insert mode uh, from Vim. Um, and it's important to know that to get out of insert mode, you just press the escape key. Um, escape key is always how you get back in normal mode. So, uh, the lowercase i is going to put you into insert mode on the left side of the cursor. So if I'm on this M and I press I, I'm going to start inserting on the left side of it, right? And then I press escape to get back in normal mode. Uh, if I press A, it's going to put it after the M, right? Uh, capital I <laughs> is pretty handy. Uh, that puts you into insert mode right before the first non-blank character. So notice how there's some spaces right here. But if I press capital I, it's going to put me right at the beginning of, of the first non-blank character. Uh, capital A is going to insert at the very end of the line. So if I'm right here and I press capital A, it's going to jump me all the way to the end, including spaces. All right, so these spaces are still here from earlier. It jumps me all the way to the very end of the line, including spaces. <clears throat> uh, so the O's are extremely useful. I use them all the time. If I'm right here and I want to put a new line above this one, I press capital O. I think of that as like opening a line right above the current one. Lowercase o is going to do the same thing, but right below. The way I remember the difference is that the capital O is taller, so it's going to go above. The lowercase o is shorter, so it's going to go below. So <clears throat> Vim also has a thing called operators, which do something over a specified uh, motion or object or something to that effect, right? So these are going to be used in combination with some with these guys and also even some of these motions up here, which we'll see in a second. So to change something, which is to say delete and put something new there, you're going to type C. D is going to delete. Uh, copying in Vim is called yanking, so that's Y. You can also take a chunk of text and run it through a shell program and put its output back into the text file, which is really, really cool. Um, Vim has something called an equal program, which is kind of like an external tool that you can use for re-indenting your file. Um, and equal is how you use that. Um, you can also swap the case of a motion, make an entire thing uh, uppercase or lowercase. You can also rot 13 and code things, because why not? Uh, and you can also shift things left and right, which is like increase or decrease the indentation of a thing. So operators can operate over motions and objects. Um, so AW is a word, which is going to include the white space around it, right? So if I come over here, let's see, where's something with spaces? So this guy. So if I type... C A W. Notice how it ate the white space uh, after the word, right? Um, C I W does not include the trailing white space. So C I W, there's still that space on the right side of the cursor there, right? Um, also, U is for undo. Uh, I forgot to put that in here before we started changing things. Uh, U is the undo button. 
uh, a capital W is change a big word. Uh, IW is inner big word. And then you can just change an entire sentence. So if I, oh, not there. Come over here and I say, hello world, uh, some cool stuff. So if I did uh, change in sentence, uh, it stopped at the period. Um, P, paragraph. So if I come up here and I do change a paragraph, it's going to take everything, uh, including the trailing new line, right? that blank line down here. Or if I do change in paragraph, it's going to leave the blank lines alone. Um, something that every programmer uses all the time is uh, changing stuff inside square brackets, curly braces, parentheses, and quotes. All right, so let's say I want to change uh, what's inside this condition, right? I can change inside these parentheses. And just type something else there, right? Uh, if I want to also delete the parentheses as well, I can change around the parentheses, and that'll also eat the parentheses. Uh, that works for any range of things. Let's say I want to change this whole function from here to here. I can do change inside curly braces. Just eat the entire function. Um, that also works on quotes. So if I come down here and say I want to change the string, I can just do change inside the double quotes. Change whatever's there, right? Um, that also works in uh, angle brackets. And Vim actually kind of understands what a tag is for like HTML or XML. Um, if you want to learn more about that, you can open the help page, um, which is something we're not really going to go into because that's like a, a whole separate thing. The Vim help system is very complex. Um, so these are... Oh, yeah, it's lost and it does. <laughs> um, okay, so uh, like I said before, uh, you can change something and you have to tell it what you want to change. So emotion is, yes, it's very handy. Um, so emotion, like I said, is pretty much anything that will move your cursor. So that includes uh, those line-wise things. So let's say I want to change until the end, right? Or I can change uh, up to and including, say, the I, right? Um, some other stuff is pretty handy. Uh, capital C is going to change from where you are all the way to the end of the line. So if I press capital C here, it's just going to chop off everything to the right, put me back into insert mode. Um, R, you can replace a single character. So let's say I want to put a char here. RC, replace that with a C. Um, capital R is occasionally very useful when you expect it. Uh, if you guys have ever used like NetBeans and press the insert key and your cursor turns black and you start overwriting stuff, um, that is replace mode. So if I press capital R, then just start typing, it just overwrites stuff in place, right? <clears throat> uh, capital J, I use quite a bit for like reformatting things. So let's say uh, I move this down a line and then I move that down a line. And then let's say I wanted to join these together, right? I could press capital J it's actually going to pull the, the next line up onto the current line. And Vim is smart enough to realize that this is a comment, so you notice it actually takes away the double slashes. Um, and if we press, so you'll notice that if I were to put a bunch of spaces here, and I press capital J, it's actually going to remove the extra space in front of the line. Uh, if I press G capital J, it'll actually, oh, I guess it doesn't work on comments. Um, so let's say I got rid of the comments. And then I press G capital J. There we go. It'll actually keep the, the space if you needed to keep the space there. 
Um, so some of the operators, when you press them twice, uh, default to acting on the current line. Oh, did I miss one? Hold on. I did. I completely missed the S's. Okay. So S is uh, delete a character and then go into insert mode. It's very, very useful, friend. Uh, I use J quite a bit when I'm like refactoring stuff and moving stuff around. Not really GJ, though. Um, boop, boop, boop. Okay, so S, I also don't really use very much. Probably should. Um, S is like delete a character and then go into insert mode. So if I type S, it's going to delete the O and then put me into insert mode, right? Um, capital S changes the entire line and maintains the indentation. Uh, so if I was capital S here, so notice where actually the indent the indentation on this uh, file is not what it should be by the Vim default setting. So if I press capital S, it's actually going to delete it and then indent me to where Vim thinks I should be indented to. Uh, I think it defaults to like eight spaces or something uh, in a C file by default. So it's going to change the current line, indent me to the proper level, and then put me into insert mode. So now I can start typing stuff, right? Uh, DD will delete the current line, right? Um, YY will copy the current line. Um, I don't actually know if I cover pasting in here. Okay, so uh, when you copy something with Vim, so let's say I copy this line, uh, pasting in Vim is often called putting. So if you press the P key, you can paste that line that you just yanked. All right, you can do it as many times as you want. Uh, you can also use the motions that we covered. So let's say I want to yank inside parentheses. Now I just copy whatever's inside those parentheses. Or I can come up here and I can yank around the double quotes. Now I just grab that entire string. And I can put it wherever I want, as many times as I want. Or I can yank inside these curly braces. Probably wait a little bit. Okay. I can yank inside these curly braces. And then just copy the body of that if statement. Um, if you ever want to really quickly just manually re-indent a line, uh, the angle brackets, just shift a line over or shift it back. Um, the tilde key, which is, so if I put my cursor here and I press tilde, it'll swap the case if I pressed it twice. Uh, it'll swap the case. I have My key repeat is being extra sensitive today, I guess. So tilde will uh, swap the case of the letter under the cursor. Um, G tilde tilde will just swap the case of the entire line for some reason. Um, G and then two uppercase U's will force the entire line uppercase. Two lowercase U's will force the entire line lowercase. And then I will swap the case on this line. So there's a couple, you know, let me make a couple more capital letters here. So then I can just swap the case of the entire line. It just swaps them. Um, <clears throat> so G is often used as just like an extra letter. There's not really a good way to remember it. Uh, they just ran out of letters and started using G, I guess. Um, so these things can also take counts. So let's say I want to go here, say, and I want to change three words. I type change three words. Or I can delete two ends, right? Um, there's a couple ways to delete things as well. Um, X is kind of just like your delete key. Uh, capital X deletes before the cursor. So like if I'm right here in the I and I type X, it's going to start deleting from the right. I press capital X, it's going to start deleting from the left, right? Uh, capital D 
deletes from the cursor to the end of the line. So it's like capital C, but it doesn't put you into insert mode. So you just chop a line off, right? <clears throat> and one thing that's really, really, really handy about Vim that I don't know if I've, it's pretty neat. Now, if you think that's cool, wait until you see the dot command, right? So uh, in Vim, you can very easily repeat some atomic change uh, with one button press, okay? So an atomic change is uh, anything you do by some motion like CW or anything from going into insert mode, doing a bunch of stuff, and then leaving insert mode, right? So let's say I want to, this is a very crude way to do it, but let's say I want to rename pointer to foo, okay? So I put my cursor somewhere over pointer, change a word, to foo, and I press escape. Put my cursor the next place I want to do it. I just press dot. Put it somewhere else, dot. All right, it repeats the last action, which was change this word to foo. So then anytime I'm on some word, just press dot, and it will change that word to foo. And that also works for insertion. So let's say I do hello world. Come down here, press dot, there's hello world. Yeah, very true agent element. Dot command, very OP, for sure. Um, cool. So searching in Vim, uh, not the most intuitive thing, uh, to search from where you are, to search from the current line forward, so towards the bottom of the file, you just type a slash, and then next, right? So it's gonna, this is all default Vim, Neo Vim settings, so it's gonna highlight each match as you type it. Uh, to go to the next match in the current direction, so slash is a forward search, question mark is a backward search. So Vim remembers what direction you searched in, okay? So a lowercase n is going to go to the next match in that direction. So I'm gonna start moving along down here, right? Capital N is going to go to the next match or the previous match in the opposite direction. Uh, something that I find a lot of people don't know about, and I'm gonna cheat real quick and turn off the highlight. <clears throat> okay, so let's say you have some complicated variable name that you don't want to keep typing over and over. If you put your cursor over a word and you press shift eight, it's going to search for the word under the cursor in the forward direction. So I'm going to move forward in the file as I press N. And then the hash mark shift three, it's going to do the same thing, but backwards. So now N is going to take me up in the file. Vim has, I think, three different regular expression engines. There's like regular, uh, what keybind? Uh, star. Oh, no, don't do that. Star. Shift eight. Yeah. Um, yeah, Vim has, I think, three different regular expression engines. There's like just a regular one, then there's magic, and then there's like very magic, which handle like special characters and escapes differently. Vim has a very, very powerful regular expression engine. Um, cool. So now let's go over uh, highlighting text. Vim can highlight things in a lot of really, really interesting ways. Um, so if you just tap lowercase v, it's gonna put you into visual mode, okay? And then as you move around, you'll see it starts highlighting things. And you can move around any way you would normally move around. W, B, J, K, dollar sign, zero. Uh, you can also search for something. So let's say I search for insert, right? Now it's highlighting all the way down to here, right? Yes, this is correct. I might have missed a couple things when I was reading, when I was putting this talk together, a couple things like that. 
So to turn off the highlight, you type colon no HL. Uh, so one thing that, I mean, big true, um, but it, it's magic that makes sense in general. <laughs> so one thing that Vim can do that I don't know if I've seen anywhere else is, so notice that my cursor is on this side of the highlight, right? I'm all the way down here. But let's say I realize, oh, hey, I want to go highlight this as well. So normally you would have to re-highlight everything. You have to go back up here and then highlight and then go back down here. In Vim, you can just press O to switch to the other side of that highlight. Just switch back and forth, change where each end is at, which is pretty handy. Um, so that's the that's type one of visual mode. Uh, type two is visual line mode. Capital V, it's going to select entire lines. No matter where your cursor is, it just grabs the whole line. Okay, and then you can still press O to switch to the other side, move it up, and switch back down here and move it back down. The third type is visual block mode. So if you press Control V, then you can just grab a block. And obviously, you can still switch to the other side. So something I use this for quite a bit is let's say I want to comment this out. So Control V, and then move down to select this block. And then if you press capital I, you'll actually insert at the beginning of that block. And when you press Escape, it gets copied down. And then when you don't want it anymore, you just delete it. Uh, and then similarly, capital A, let's say you miss a semicolon on a bunch of lines, you just do that, right? Um, and another thing that is very useful very often, let's say I highlight this, and then I go somewhere else, and I realize, oh, hey, I want to highlight that again. If you press GV, it'll re-highlight the last thing you selected, which I use quite a bit. So um, Vim's insert mode, uh, that's going to type, you're going to type colon no HL. That's how you turn off the cursor highlight. That work? You good? Cool. So uh, insert mode in Vim can actually do quite a bit more than just typing letters, okay? Uh, so it actually does have some basic uh, completion. So if you start typing something and then you press Control N, it'll actually search for things that match that pattern in the current file. Um, I don't have anything that's ambiguous, do I? Um, oh, there we go, T, Control N. So there's everything in the file that starts with T. So if I just keep pressing Control N, it'll just go through the list. Control P is going to go backwards. Um, and let's see. Let's grab Take. All right. So let's grab Take right here. Um, if I then press, so after I make my selection, if I press Control X, Control N, it'll actually grab the next word. All right. So now I have the first node, right? I can just keep grabbing stuff. So it actually remembers where it pulled that from and you can keep grabbing stuff from there. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, you can also, so if I grab take and then do control X, control P, oh, it's still doing it out. Never mind, disregard. Um, so another thing it can do that's very, very nifty. So let's say right here, I make a new file called some cool file dot C, right? So uh, actually let's make that some cool file dot H. 
and then let's go to the top of the file. Let's say I want to include it. So I can type pound include uh, S, and then if I press control X, control F, it'll actually complete file names from the current directory. And then if there's multiple, so let's say I touch file one through five. So now I have five different files. If I type F control X control F, it'll actually let me pick which file I want. And you can just go through the menu with control N control P. It's pretty neat. And this is all like, I just installed NeoVim on this virtual machine like a couple minutes ago. This is all vanilla, brand new, out of the box. Um, another thing that I use all the freaking time when I, so my go-to debug method is when in doubt, print it out. So I have print Fs all over the place. Uh, so instead of retyping a million print Fs, this is what I do. If I type part of the line I want, so print, and I press Control X, Control L, it'll actually just complete entire lines. Just grab an entire line from somewhere in the current file. Uh, it actually does more than the current file, but that is a topic for another talk that we will hopefully do sometime. Uh, and then if you press Control X, Control L, it grabs the next line, right? Um, ah, something I use all the time that has caused me much peril in web browsers. Uh, if you are in insert mode and you press control W, it will delete a word. So as I'm typing along, if I make a typo, just hit control W real quick. Uh, and that's really great until you are trying to search for something and you spell a word wrong and you close your browser tab. Uh, you can also press control U, which will just delete all the way to the beginning of the line. <clears throat> uh, so command mode is uh, where things like colon no HL come from. Uh, it's like a, a little built-in command line inside Vim. So uh, as some of you might like to know, to quit Vim, it's colon Q. Right. Um, to so you'll notice so down. Oh, don't do that. Uh, see these little plus signs down here. That means the file has unsaved changes. So if I try to quit normally, it's actually going to tell me no write since last change. Add exclamation mark to overwrite. I have unsaved changes. Vim won't let me throw it away. Uh, to tell it no, I really don't want these. Colon Q exclamation mark. Right, that's quit without saving. It's like force quit, right? Uh, to save it, that's called writing it to the disk. <laughs> uh, colon W. It, it do be, it do be looking out for us. Uh, so colon W is going to write the file to the disk. Right, it's another word for saving. To save and quit, it, it do protect, vim protect. So to, you can also write and quit at the same time. It does have to be in that order. You write and quit the file. Uh, you can also use colon X, which will exit. <laughs> uh, colon X will exit and only save the file if it's been changed. Uh, something that most people don't know, you can actually quit Vim from normal mode without colon Q or any of that. If you tap ZZ, two capital Zs, that is the same as colon X. Um, and if you type ZQ, that is the same as colon Q exclamation mark. So another thing, Vim quits you, nice. <laughs> um, so another thing that's really, really neat is you can actually run shell commands from Vim. So, you do that by typing colon exclamation mark and then some commands. So let's say I want to run ls, right? Here's the output of ls right here, OK? Uh, you can also switch what file you're editing. So I can do colon e 
and then say I want to edit some file, and tab completion also works here. So now I'm editing some file.h. Uh, now I'm back in example.c. I need to quit them. Um, you can also read in the contents of another file into the current file. So if I edit uh, some file.h, and then I put some cool stuff here, right? And I'll save and quit, and then I'll open up example.c. So I can then, right here, I can read in the contents of some cool file.h. <laughs> Uh, so you can so if you have some file with you know something that you want to include in the current file, you can just have them read that into the current file. <laughs> Bye, Claire. Um, okay, so where it gets really really cool is when you can start reading in the output of commands. So you can colon r ls, right? There, just ran ls, put the output into my file. Uh, you can also take the current line, run, give that as input to a command, and then take the output and put it back into the file. That's where it gets really, really, really cool. So let's say I have just some lines of text, all right? Uh, actually, no, we'll, we'll do that next. So let's say I have a uh, print hello from from Python, all right? Uh, there is not a print function in C, there is printf. But this is valid Python. Oh, no semicolon. So what I can do is I can type. Uh, so the you can give a range of lines as input to the command. And just like how dot is the current directory in a shell, dot is the current line in Vim. See, I don't use colon R that much. Um, if it's useful to you, great. Uh, I don't particularly need to do that. Um, so I can type colon dot and then some command. So let's say I want to take the current line, run it through Python. Oh, um, this is pop, uh, Python 3. There we go. Cool, so there's hello from Python 3. <clears throat> so again, that's take the current line, run it through Python 3, and put its output in its place. Um, yeah, so they're talking about ranges. Um, so <clears throat> if you select something with visual mode and then go into command mode, you'll notice down here there's these little guys. You want to leave those there. Yeah, we're getting there flip and flip. Hold on a second. I'm going to show you something really cool. So if you highlight some stuff in visual mode, and then you press colon, you'll see these guys down there. Leave them there. Those are the range represented by what you have selected. OK, so you want to leave those there. Now, let's say I have a equals x for x in range uh, 10. Print, we'll do an F string, uh, int A equals boop, 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 boop. Okay, so this is some Python code. It's going to generate some C code. Pretty freaking cool. <clears throat> Another thing you can use that for is, let's say we have just some lines of text. <clears throat> we can take it. Yep. Now, there's actually some use cases for this. Now, let's say I have a bunch of lines, and I want to sort them. Bam, now they're sorted. That easy. And even better, let's say I have some duplicates of this guy. So I have a whole bunch of ASDFs in here. I can take that, I can sort it, and then sort. I can actually just run any shell command, so I can pipe it into unique. 
and bam, sorted, deduplicated, done. Easy. Just clean this up a little bit here. So uh, that really, really uh, annoying way of renaming a variable by doing caw in the dot command, uh, there's a, a lot easier ways to do that in Vim. So <clears throat> to do a what's called a substitution, it's like a find and replace, right? Uh, you type, let's see, where's a better line to do this? We'll do it here. We'll change next, okay? So you're going to do colon s, which means substitute. And then we're going to do slash the thing you want to substitute slash uh, the thing you want to substitute it with. So I'm going to substitute next with Fuber. Uh, yeah, it's actually, can you link the resources again? There's a whole like markdown page on the GitLab. Um, <clears throat> yeah, right there. Click on that. There's like a, a whole like mega markdown page. Um, so down here, I'm going to substitute next with Fuber. So now I press enter, bam, done. And kind of annoyingly, it also like highlights everything. So let's just colon no HL for no highlight. Um, now, one of the problems with that is it will only change the first match. So if down here, I type substitute pointer with Fuber, it only changes the first one, okay? So what you do about that is same command, substitute pointer Fuber, and you stick a slash G at the end. That's for a global substitute. So you're globally on the current line changing pointer to Fuber. Now it gets both of them, right? Uh, and if you ever want to do the entire file, just the, change that thing in the whole file, uh, there's a special symbol for that. So the range, uh, oh, hold on. So you can, real quick, you can also give it a line number. So I don't have line numbers turned on, but let's say uh, line one through 50 replace uh, node. I think so, yeah. Vim has some wonky regex things, but I think oh, it is said, yeah. Uh, there's a whole line of lineage. Um, side note, this is something I told some other people in the Discord chat a while ago. So the, the heritage of where Vim came from. Um, many moons ago. Uh-huh. Yeah. <clears throat> it absolutely does. It's awesome. So, uh, many moons ago, there was an editor called QEd, which was like the quick editor or something like that, or quick and dirty editor or something. And then from that, we get Ed, the standard Unix editor, which was made by Thompson or Ritchie or one of them. Um, and... From Ed, we get boop, 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 boop. Ooh. Uh, so there is this thing called, I want to say it's called the Thompson hack. I'm pretty sure. So one of the guys, uh, Ken Thompson or Dennis Ritchie, uh, hacked Ed and put regular expressions into it. Okay. So the syntax for doing a search in Ed was globally search for a regular expression and print it out. It's where grep comes from. They turned it into its own command. <clears throat> so from ed, we get uh, n, and then we get m, and then we get x. Yup, that is correct. m is the editor for mortals. Um, so X had a thing. So X was originally a line editor, just like everything before it. Um, oh, also side note. Um, oh, don't do that. Sed is the stream editor. Uh, it takes add commands and operates on streams of text. So it's the stream editor, um, just for completeness there. So in X, uh, it eventually had a visual mode, 
Um, can I get to it in here? Yes. So uh, in Vim, if you type capital Q, you get into X mode. Okay, this is how you edited text. So actually, uh, if we come over here and I go into X mode, um, if I did like 1 through 10 P, it's going to print lines 1 through 10. This is how you did your editing. So then if I said uh, line 1, 2, 3, 4, so if I said go to line 4, <clears throat> and then I did substitute, cool with that. Okay, and then I did a save. Okay, cool. So that's how you did your editing back in the day. That's how uh, what, what we're called line editors work. That's ed, m, n, x. All those are line editors. That is how you did your work, one line at a time, or over ranges of lines through, you know, like five through 50, print, right? There you go, just printed lines five through 50. Now, X eventually added a visual interface, right? So if you were in X and you typed visual, or you could also shorten it to just VI, you get into visual mode. That's where VI comes from. And then Vim takes VI and makes it better. You could say it improves it. That's why we get VI improved, which is Vim. And then a large number of events happened and they forked Vim and made NeoVim. And now we're at this talk. That's how that happened. Yeah, so that's where Vim comes from. And then some dude got pissed off at Bram and said, screw you and made NeoVim. And now we're here. Uh, <laughs> um, okay. So <clears throat> anyway, substitution commands, uh, they can take a range. Um, you can also do a substitution over an entire file very easily. Um, so uh, as you know, things can take ranges. So we can say lines five to 50, substitute foobar. Now, if you wanna do the entire file, there's a special range for that. Uh, I'll wait for this to clear. Uh, that's just colon percent. Percent means this file. Uh, we're not going to cover that in this talk, but if you're in the Discord, feel free to start that argument with me because I would love to have it with you. Um, I highly recommend you join the Discord. It's a lot of fun. There's some cool people in there. Somebody link the Discord. Go. Um, so to substitute in the entire file, it's going to be colon percent s. So substitute in the entire file, there we go, uh, pointer with a yeet. There we go. Substitute everywhere in the file, pointer happens, put yeet there instead. It's a global finder in a place. Um, but again, that will only do the first match on each line. Um, so percent %s foo bar g, every match on every line. <clears throat> Uh, bum, 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 bum. Cool. Here's some cool stuff. Now, um, what if you want to do a find and replace on some long or complicated word or file or what have you that you don't want to keep typing over and over and over again? What you can do, put your cursor on the thing. Cool. So you put your cursor over the word <clears throat> before you go into insert mode or before you go into uh, command mode, you type colon, you type control W control, or control R control W, it's actually going to take the word from your cursor, stick it down here. So I can say percent S control R control W foo G, done. Just replace everywhere pointer happens with the word foo. Um, oh, no, I just, now, another thing you can do is you can actually do that same thing. You stick a C on the end of it. Now it's going to ask you, do you want to do this? Here's all your options. I forget what all the options mean, but basically, here's the match. Do you want to do it? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. So you can have it ask you. Pretty handy. Uh, you can also pull in an entire line under the cursor, which is pretty cool. Uh, so if I have foo bar, foo bar, baz, buzz, 
right? A whole bunch of stuff. If I press Control R, Control L, that whole line is down here now. Um, how much more is there to do? Okay. Um, I guess, I mean, we're, we're basically done. So I guess we'll finish it. I didn't think I was going to get through all this. But I guess we'll just finish it up, and then uh, it'll be recorded if you miss some or have to go. So uh, the way Vim does multiple files is a little bit different than most editors. Um, a buffer is a file that is loaded into memory, right? It's just a, a file that Vim has open, OK? A window is just a viewport into that buffer which means, as you might guess, you can have multiple windows looking at the same file or the same buffer, just in different spots. A split is just two windows next to each other. And then tabs are, you know, tabs as you'd expect, they hold windows, right? Um, there's two main kinds of buffers. There's an active one, one that you can see, and a hidden one, it's kind of minimized. Um, you can view your buffers with either buffers I have one open right now, uh, or just call an ls, right? Gives you an uh, list your files, right? Uh, if you have, uh, so this guy right here, this is the number of the buffer. If you type uh, buff, no, it's, uh, yeah, uh, buff and then one, right? It's going to open buffer number one, right? Um, so really quick, if I edit uh, somecoolfile.h, and then run colon ls, you'll see now I have two files open. This one is active. This one is not. So if I do uh, buff one, I switch there. Buff two, I go back to the other one, right? Uh, cool. So splits, pretty uh, straightforward. If I want to do a vertical split, I type colon vs. Split my file in half vertically, one on left, one on right. So now what I can do is I can look in two different spots in my file at the same time. And then you'll notice that if I start typing, it updates in both at the same time because they're looking at the same spot, right? They're looking at the same buffer. Uh, to do a regular split, a sideways split, colon S or uh, colon S. Is it SP? Ah, colon SP. I was wrong. I will fix that later. Colon SP is going to do a sideways split. So now I have three the file the same file open in three different spots. Okay. Um, you can also uh, there's some key bindings for this. Um, control W, Control S, sideways split. Control W, Control V, vertical split. To navigate around them is a little bit obtuse. Control W and then movement. So L, take me right. Control W, J takes me down. Control W, K takes me back up, right? Um, so running colon Q will actually just close uh, one window. If that window is the only one, then Vim quits. Uh, otherwise, it just shows you the next one, right? Uh, to quit all of them, it's colon Q all. To save and quit all of them, W Q all. Right? Correct. They are all within the existing. Yeah, colon Q A. There's you can. There's a handful of abbreviations, but they're not strictly guessable all the time. Um, yeah, flip and flip. They are all contained within the same Vim. So let me full screen this guy. This is all the same Vim session. Like there is not multiple terminals here. This is one window. So correct, it's not multiple terminals. It is one Vim splitting itself into multiple windows. Um, cool. Correct, yes. It's like Tmux splitting up you know, in like subdividing, 
uh, but it's not spawning multiple processes. It's one vim that's subdividing the current window into smaller windows. Yes. Um, so, yes. Uh, so there's also uh, a handful of ways to start vim. So let me just save and quit. Sure. Um, so let's say I do I have GCC on here? I do. Okay. So it's mad about line four. Okay. Let's say that was, I compile it. It tells me, oh, you have an error on line X. Okay. What I can do is I can type this as you normally would. Cool, man. Have a good one. Um, and if you just type plus some line number, you'll see I actually start on that line number. Which is pretty handy for when you have a compiler error and it says, oh, line 37 has an issue. Just open Vim and go straight to line 37. Uh, boo, boo, boo. You can also search for something. So let's say let's say I want to open the file and have my cursor on the word next. So you type plus slash and then a search term. Bam. Now my cursor is on the line with next and it's searched for. Right? It's pretty handy. Um, didn't cover tabs, did we? No, we have not covered tabs yet. Okay, so tabs are made with colon tab new, right? Just as you'd expect, tabs. So to go to the next tab, G lowercase t. To go to the previous tab, G capital T. Okay. Um, you can also, uh, so you can obviously uh, make a split and then edit a different file. So say, uh, not the readme, um, right? So I made a split and then I changed what file after the fact, or I can do colon vertical split and then tell it what file to split into. Right, so I can specify that when I make the split. And then uh, with tabs, that's tab edit uh, some file. It'll open that file in a tab and they can switch between them, right? Um, cool, so some other ways to start Vim. You can give it uh, some number of files. So let's say all the file ends, there's like four of them. And if I give it a dash O, little o, it's going to open them all up in uh, a vertical stack, uh, sideways splits. Okay. If I give it a capital O, they're going to be vertical splits, as wide as it can be, right? Uh, something I use quite a bit is um, dash P. It's going to open them in tabs. So something I use that for quite a bit is let's say I have, uh, hold on one second here, I need to move something. Okay, so let's say I have a thing.c and then I have bar.c and bar.h. So now I have one, two, three C files and two header files, right? So something I'll do quite a lot is I will open all my C files, all my header files, put them into tabs. So now it just opens them all up as tabs. Hang on one second. Um, Cool, so that is how I just open up all my source files next to all my header files and just have them all in tabs, just like that. Um, diff mode, very, very handy. So let's say I take copy example.c to new file.c and I open up new file and I change some stuff. and add some lines, cool. So uh, Vim has built-in diffing, which is very, very nice. So if you type nvim dash D and then file one, file two, and then I'll make that bigger, uh, it'll actually go through and highlight the differences. 
So change the file, change some stuff here, change some stuff here. So that's deletion. Uh, this file has added lines that this one does not have. That's why they're dashed. Um, and you'll notice that it actually folds things that are the same. If you want to see it, you just put your cursor over it, press spacebar, bar, it'll open it up. So it'll actually hide things that are the same. Um, cool. So that's that. So uh, some cool settings that I find pretty handy. Um, let's see here. Here we go. Do, 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 do. Okay. Um, so you're probably going to want to turn this, have this guy in here. Oh, we should probably go over where you put them. So uh, the location for uh, configs is going to be in dot config. Uh, there's an NVIM folder. And then you want to open init.vim. Okay. Um, so this, uh, so when there's no vim config, oh, thank you. I'm glad you, you find it useful. Um, so, uh, by default in both Vim and NeoVim, if there is no config, it uses a default one. And if you care, um, that is defaults.vim by Mr. T Pope. Um, Tim Pope made it. There's a thing called defaults.vim, which is just like a, a default configuration file. If you don't, uh, actually have one already. Um, so as soon as you make one, uh, some of the stuff that I just showed you stops working until you turn it back on. Uh, so file type plugin indent on says, um, detect what file type it is and then load the plugins for that file type and turn on the indent for that file type. Um, so Vim has a bunch of stuff that it just, it comes with about like, this is how C files work. This is how you know, language X files work. It has default syntax highlighting and indentation and some other things. And this says, turn that on. Uh, syntax on obviously turns on your syntax highlighting. Um, auto indent is, you know, when you open a curly brace and you press enter. What do you mean mess with tabs? What do you mean by that? Um, uh, well, you can just change it. We're going to, that's what these things do right there. Those are going to set your tabs to N, you know, whatever N you choose. Um, so we're, we're getting there. Um, so it, uh, by the way, in the config file, you don't put a colon in front of it. Uh, you just, so whatever you would type after the colon, so say syntax, syntax on, you don't put the colon in the config file, right? They're assumed to be commands. So the colon's not needed there. Um, auto indent turns on the, the auto indentation, right? It'll figure out how indented it's supposed to be. So if you have like, if something, it'll actually, when I press enter, it'll tab me over. Actually, I prefer I prefer seven spaces. Uh, seven spaces is the ideal tab width. Um, so line numbers, pretty handy. I'm actually going to use this trick. Control R, Control L, right? Turn on line numbers with set number. <laughs> um, you can tell I'm a man of culture because I have expand tab on. I prefer spaces over tabs. Um, okay, so 
uh, shift width is how wide your tabs are. Um, soft tabs, soft. there's just a handful of what a tab means in different contexts. Just set them all to the same number. Uh, wild menu is very, very handy. Uh, so if you type colon s tab, okay, wild menu is on by default. Did not know that. Uh, wild menu is what does this. It gives you a nice little pop-up. You can press control N, control P to go through. Uh, without that, um, I forget what it looks like. Set no wild menu. Okay, so without wild menu, it just tabs through them one at a time. It doesn't show you what's going on. Wild menu is what turns on that big purple list that shows you all your options. Uh, control R, control L. Cool. Uh, set ignore case makes searches case insensitive by default. Um, so it defaults to a case insensitive search. Smart case, however. Oh, it does it automatically. Make no or Vim knows about make files, and that's part of this stuff up here. That is a uh, part of this thing, right? It says, oh, I'm in a make file. I have default settings for a make file. So it does that for you automatically. So you can have expand tab on all day long. You open a make file, it turns it off. Just by default, make Vim just knows about make files. I'm positive because I wrote a lot of make files last semester and never had an issue. Uh, if you are in the Discord, you can talk to me about that. I will be happy to help you. Um, but I promise it does. And it is very neat. I concur. Uh, boop, 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 boop. Uh, wild menu, very handy. Uh, ignore case makes it case insensitive by default. Uh, smart case makes it case sensitive if you type a capital letter. So if I do set ignore case, and then uh, let's see what's something I have a bunch of. Do do. Let's just say the. There's probably a lot of thes in here. Okay. So if I type, so if I go to the top of my file and I type slash the, it's going to match a bunch of thes, right? Including the capital the that I put in here somewhere. All right, see, it's also matching these capital thes, even though I clearly search for T with a lowercase. However, if I turn on a smart case and I search for a lowercase T, it's going to match the capital and the lowercase because it defaults to insensitive. If I search for capital T, Suddenly, it's case sensitive now. So I really like having it insensitive by default, case sensitive when I type an uppercase. It's very, very nice. Uh, show match is what uh, you'll notice how it highlights the matching uh, parenthesis. That's show match. If I turn on no show match, it still does that. Have a good one, Daniel. Um, maybe not. Oh, no, that's what it does. Um, set show match. So when I type the closing one, it'll highlight it. That's what it is. So you notice how when I type the closing one, it'll highlight the one it matches to. Like that. Um, so set hidden is what will allow a buffer to go into the background when you quit it. So right now, if I you know did colon e foo, uh, and then okay, so I forget how to show you what hidden does. I recommend it. It's it makes things work better. Uh, with like putting files in the background and dealing with multiple files at a time. Very much so recommend that. Um, term GUI colors, turn it on if you have a computer from anywhere recently. Um, NeoVim might have it on by default. I'm pretty sure Vim doesn't. 
uh, you get nicer colors. You can have more color schemes. Pretty neat. Now, some stuff I really like uh, that you might is a uh, cursor line. Um, I have a color scheme on my Vim that makes the whole line just be highlighted differently as opposed to just this big line underlining it. So color schemes can change how that looks. Uh, I really like this because I like just being able to see what line my cursor's on. Um, something you might not want so much, cursor column. So my cursor line looks like my cursor column, but this way, because of my color scheme. Uh, but cursor column is a thing, and it can be handy if you need to line up some text. Uh, just turn it on for a little bit and then turn it off when you're done. Do, do, do. Um, ink search, which I think is on by default. Um, yeah, so see how as I'm typing, it starts to match? That is ink search. You can, um, there's a bunch of plugin, or there's a bunch of color schemes that are like pre-made. Uh, you can download them. Um, I am a big fan of Iceberg. This is my current color scheme. I am also a fan of Nord. The Nord Vim color scheme makes comments very difficult to see because there's a very small amount of contrast. I think they should be as long as they need to be, uh, but they never need to be 500 columns. So there's a sane, like a sanity checking thing for that. Uh, they should be as long as they need to be, but they don't need to be that long. That's kind of my view on that. Um, there's also, uh, so that was cursor column. There's also a color column. So you want 80, 80 columns? There you go, bud. You can just turn that on. So that was, where is it? Color column. Uh, mark column n. So color column equals n. So you can just do that. And then there you go. Um, so if we set ink search, as I start typing, uh, you'll notice that it actually moves. So if I'm up here and I start searching for I and C, you'll notice it actually moves my cursor there. So ink search moves your cursor to the first match as you go. Um, something that I blew my freaking mind uh, when I saw this was set ink command equals split. Ink command equals split. Now, you guys saw me do find and replace. You did not see this. So if I do percent s slash i get this little window that pops up at the bottom and if i start typing pointer or hold on no this is the wrong file for that um screen s screen okay mm, actually we'll do mode there's a bunch of modes together um why you do this hold on let me find a good spot to show you so like right here Mode. Okay, so you see all these modes up here that are all highlighted? Uh, that set ink command equals split thing uh, gives this little pop-up down here that shows you matches, and it also does the substitution live. It's really, really neat. I like that a lot. Bum, 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 bum. Um, so there's set number. Um, I personally turn on a relative number. So you notice that it says, you know, I'm on line 481. And then this is, you know, one, two, three, four lines above me. Um, I don't use it as it's intended to be used. I just like it. But you can say uh, visually select 12 lines up, right? You don't have to count lines anymore. You just say, oh, I want to go 12 lines up. And then you do, right? Uh, or I can say uh, delete 10 down just deleted 10 lines down, right? And I don't have to count because it tells me how far away it is. Um, expand tab because we're not heathens. Uh, no wrap will disable line wrapping. So if I just open another terminal here, just boop, boop, cool. So you'll notice how there's not a line number here. 
It's because it's actually part of this line because it's wrapping. So if I uh, do set no wrap, it turns off wrapping and then they just go out past the edge of the screen. You can scroll over to see them. I prefer that when I'm programming because it breaks my brain when things are wrapped. Um, but while we're here, if we set wrap, you'll notice uh, I am right here. If I press J, I'm actually going to go down to this line. Because by default, J uh, doesn't move down like physical lines on the screen. It moves down logical lines. So if a line is split, it'll jump over all the splits and go to the next like physical line. It is wonky. I agree, which is why I have remapped it to not do that. So if you press GJ, it will respect physical lines. So GJ, GK actually respect physical line count. I have just remapped them to always be GJ and GK, uh, which I think I have in here. I'll show you in a minute. Um, expand tab because we're not heathens. Um, you can hint to or force them to treat your background as light or dark. So if I do set background equals light, see how it highlights things a little bit differently? Or I can do set background equals dark. Right, so you can say, oh, hey, my terminal has a dark background, so you need lighter foreground colors. Or you have a light background, so you need darker foreground colors, stuff like that. I always have everything dark. Um, that's what I do. And something that a lot of people probably don't know, Vim actually has really good mouse support. Uh, so set mouse equals A. Let me just click and drag really quick. So yeah, Vim actually does have mouse support. Uh, I don't really need it like ever because Vim, uh, but it is a thing. So you can use your mouse perfectly fine in Vim. And I agree, but it exists. Um, something I do a lot, there's a magical uh, setting called SO. I think it's for scroll off. It is, but it's it exists. It's still there. Uh, so this is something I do all the time. So SO is the number of lines to keep above and below the cursor at all times, a minimum. So if I so notice how when I hit the top of the file, then it starts scrolling. If I say set SO equals seven, there will always be seven lines above or below my cursor at all times. What I do is I set it to 999, and now my cursor is always in the middle of my screen. I prefer to have my cursor in the middle at all times, so I just make it there. That doesn't go there. Um, boop, 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 boop. Cool. So some really cool keybinds, and these are all in the thing as well, the readme. Um, this guy right here. So I will grab both of these guys real quick. Now. I think this will work. Now, if I take this line and I hold Alt and I press K, oh, I'm just going to take this line up here. I'm going to move it back down here. I'm going to take this line. It's going to go down here. Actually, I want to put it back up here. And then this guy and this guy. So I want to take this dash and I want to put it over here. And now I want to put the dash back over here. So one thing to note about these is if you take a character too far to the left, it will start deleting things. So don't do that. Uh, it is a thing, though. Uh, these things right here are what force it to respect wrapping. Um, so J is always GJ. So even if I do have a line broken, it moves down a physical line, not a logical line. Uh, I have control C map to do that colon no HL. So, you know, that's why you might have seen me if I search for something, I press control C really quick. It's because I'm used to doing that to turn off the highlight. That's what I bound it to. You can bind it to whatever you feel so inclined, obviously. Uh, I have disabled my arrow keys. Um, if you're starting out with them, you might want to do that to force you to learn how to do it the correct way. Uh, bum, bum, bum. So I also have some rebindings for dealing with windows that I find very, very handy. Uh, I'll just full screen this guy. Um, let 
turn that guy off too. Um, so uh, we will steal that guy and steal that guy. And I'm just going to steal all these guys. Okay, so now uh, make some splits as normal. Now, if I just hold down the control key and then use my Vim keys, I can just move around. Instead of control W, H, control W, H, I just hold down control and then I move around as I want. And then if I just press control Q, it'll close that buffer. And then these guys. So now instead of doing tab new over and over and over again, I just press control W, control T. And then I just press control Q to quit. And then make some blank space on here. Um, so something you guys may or may not know is in a terminal, if you press control L, it'll clear the screen. I use that all the time. Uh, that also works in Vim. It will redraw the screen. Sometimes there's just some artifacts that happen for whatever reason. Um, also, um, you'll notice that it leaves this colon down here, right? So your previous command will often be left here. Control L will clear that, which is something I like because I don't like having extra stuff on my screen. Uh, but we rebound Control L to move to the to, to move right a window. So what I did is I just remapped it to uh, Shift L. All right. So see how that's still down there. Now if I press Shift L, it'll clear it. And then I also have these guys. So now I make some tabs. And then to cycle through them, I just press tab. And to go backwards, I just press shift tab. And then to close them, just control Q. Uh, and that's my Vim talk. So this whole file is on the GitLab. And so is uh, this example.c file. Um, yeah. That's all I got. Yeah. Uh, do you guys have any questions? I can show you some more stuff. I'm going to guess there's no questions. If you guys have some, feel free to throw them out. Oh, was, oh, I didn't know that was to me, Devin. Oh. Um, so what I... Could I pan dock a version? I could, sure. Uh, I didn't realize that was to me. That's why I didn't answer it. Uh, how long does it? Oh, I should show you this. Um, OK, yes. OK, good questions, friends. So uh, there is a slightly old website. It's uh, Vim Colors. Yeah, vimcolors.com. There's 916 color schemes. They're kind of, they haven't updated this in a hot minute. Um, but there's a bunch of them on here with some different settings and stuff. Um, how much more powerful can Vim be? I mean, you can, well, NeoVim especially, like NeoVim 0.5 is adding Lua as a plugin language. So now there's a butt ton of Lua plugins and they're really speedy. Like there was a talk by TJ DeVries. Um, actually real quick, uh, Vim, Vim, oh, let's go to YouTube. Typing is hard. Um, yeah, okay. I mean, that's cool. I could. Um, VimConf 2020. There was a virtual VimConf, um, which is a whole bunch of stuff about Vim. 
Um, there's also uh, Thoughtbot. I learned a butt ton of stuff from the Thoughtbot. They have a somewhere in here. They have Vim meetups. So there's a whole playlist of a bunch of Vim stuff. Uh, very, very nice. Um, what other questions do we have here? How much more powerful can it be? Uh, as powerful as you can program it to be. If you want to make your own plugins, there's also a bazillion other plugins. Uh, I plan on doing a plugin talk uh, and showing you the plugins I have. So not using a pop VM, but using my actual one because my actual VM is cracked out. You can ask like anyone in the Discord. Um, Mm-hmm. How long does it take? Uh, that's what I wanted to show you. Cool. So uh, something that a surprising number of people don't realize. Vim and NeoVim have a built-in tutorial. Um, okay. So before we do that, um, editor learning curve. So... There is a thing in my way. So yeah, so you have your editor learning curves here. So Vim has what we call a learning cliff. There's a big bump. And once you get over it, it's fantastic. Um, and then like, who knows what the hell Visual Studio and Emacs are doing. We don't need to talk about them. Um, no, Vim is not simple. Uh, and you'll find that any tool worth using won't be because it's full of features. So you have to have ways to do those things. So. Vim is really not that, it's not that difficult because if you notice the things you want to do, you usually type the first letter of what you want to do. Emacs is another text editor that we don't mention in here. Um, so in Vim, if you want to change a word, you type C-A-W, change a word. Flip and flip, you're banned. Um, yes, absolutely. Devin gets it. Um, if you So in Vim, if you wanted to, I don't know, change inside some double quotes, you type CI double quote. <laughs> it's okay. Um, if you want to change a paragraph, you type CAP, change a paragraph, right? Vim really is a language. And in here, uh, there's a video on the Vim grammar. Uh, and then there's another one on doing 90% of what Vim does without plugins. Right here, that's this one. So ThoughtBot has tons of good videos. I'm really sad they stopped doing them. Um, what question was I trying to answer? Ah, how long does it take to learn Vim? Okay, so if for some unknown reason you are using regular Vim, uh, type Vim Tutor. Okay, it's going to get you a built-in Vim tutorial. Okay, now in NeoVim, now on Pop! OS, if you only have NeoVim installed, uh, it actually symlinks this to work correctly. But the guaranteed way to do it, start NVim, type colon, tutor with a capital T. Full tutorial. Gets you up and running. Takes 15, 30 minutes. I recommend you do it twice just to really get it. Uh, and then keep that markdown page I made handy. Um, it's very lengthy boy. There are a thousand lines in it. Uh, and it has some links to some other stuff. Vimcast, also very good. Uh, learn Vim script the hard way if you want to learn into scripting. Uh, Bram Moulinar, the guy who made Vim, has a thing on like good habits of text editing that are not Vim specific, just in general. Um, let's see. So yeah, uh, how hard is it to learn Vim? I mean, as hard as it is to learn anything, you just keep doing it. Like it's, once you figure out the basics, it's pretty straightforward and you can just go up from there. Um, cool, do we have any other questions?
Is there any way? Okay. There is a Vim surround. That's its purpose. You highlight a block and you can, you, you can, yeah. Um, so you can not only surround stuff with things, but change what's surrounding it. And Tim Pope is a god. We do not deserve this man. He just leaks fantastic plugins. Um, Surround.vim, no exception. And it, of course, follows the Vim language that you would be used to if you're, if you're using Vim. So let's say your cursor is right here, and you want to change these double quotes to single quotes. You type change surrounding double quote to single quote. Bam. Now you got single quotes. Um, you can make it a tag, apparently. I didn't know you could do that. You can change the quotes to some quote tags. Um, change surrounding tag to double quote. Delete the surrounding double quote. Um, okay, you can uh, yank the surrounding word into the square brackets. So if your cursor is right here, and you type that, then it surrounds that word in square brackets. Um, it can also do space padding and not space padding. So a closing bracket is not space padded. A left is. Uh, let's see. Um, if you highlight some text and press capital S and then something, Yeah, you know, so yes, but also um, Vim auto pairs. Uh, it completes brackets for you and it respects indent. Um, so if you type square bracket and then press enter, oh, then you, you would highlight it. So what you would do here, I'll show you real quick. It's not going to work because I don't have the plugin. But what you would do is let's say I wanted to surround this word or these words, okay? I would go like this, type capital S double quote, and then it would surround it in double quotes. Does that make sense, Flip? That's how that works. Yeah, yeah, it, it does all of that. Yeah, auto pairs is fantastic. It's the best one I found. I had a, an autocomplete bracing plugin that broke my C++ auto completion horribly, and I don't understand how. Uh, auto pairs did not do that, so I have been using it since. Um, if you guys feel so inclined, yeah, auto pairs very very nice. Um, that's not a thing. Typing is hard. Dot. Drop. Boom. So if we go here, shameless self plug, uh, and then we go to dot files, and then config, and then nvim. Uh, here's all my vim stuff. So my plugins file alone is a beefy boy. I have like 95 plugins, I think. So it's it's a beefy boy. Um, and whoever asked why NeoVim over regular Vim, uh, I have one word for you, flow term. Um, come on, it's got to be a better picture than that. Oh, you rat. Two images. Okay, Vim float term. Let's see, just pop up a... Floating windows is freaking fantastic. Um, it lets you just pop up a terminal. Um, and there's also Vista, which is now like deprecated kind of, um, but it utilizes the floating windows. Let's see if it'll show it. I'm not gonna show it. Um, no, it is the most immediately user facing difference. Um, they also have made it they have generalized the API to talk to other languages. So now you can write a, uh, here, if we go here, um, 
Uh, it integrates with your clipboard by default if you have the right thing tool installed. Um, it's trivial to write uh, plugins in other languages. They have providers for like Node.js, Ruby, uh, the Pythons. There's a bunch of other ones for other languages. So it's much easier to write language plugins in other languages. They are also integrating Lua into uh, NeoVim 0.5, which is working pretty well. I run the, the beta on my laptop. Um, cool, have a good one, man. Um, then there is also, I recommend that you guys go to youtube.com tree sitter. Okay. Watch this video. Okay. Tree sitter, uh, can be used to do syntax highlighting based on a parse tree. Okay. Currently in Vim, syntax highlighting is done doing regular expressions. And if you know anything about regular expressions, you know that they can be a very large pain. Probably. I mean, it's ABI compatible with C, so I would assume you could if you felt you could probably like patch it into Vim if you felt so inclined. And I'm sure that somebody has wrote a thing to do that. Uh, Vim plugin in Rust. There you go, bud. So, um, yeah, I would say so. Um, okay, watch this video. Tree sitter. Uh, lets you do syntax highlighting based off of a parse tree, uh, which means that it can do smart syntax highlighting because it doesn't just know what something looks like. It knows what it is. It knows, oh, this is a custom user-defined data type. It should be the same color as all the other data types versus like, oh, these are the ones that come with the language, so they're just hard-coded to be blue. So tree sitter can be like, oh, this thing is a data type that the user defines, so I'm going to make it blue just like the built-in data types. And it works very, very, very well. Um, and if you see this giant block here, this is one long line of text. Um, oh, go away. Hold on. Hold on, let me show you. Let me, let me find it right quick, friends. Because this blew my freaking mind. Okay. Oh, look, there was Rust. Slauson. Look. Haha, <laughs> Rust. Okay, so this is one big line of text. Regular expressions break. <laughs> okay. Now, hold on, hold on. This is tree sitter. Okay. It can parse one continuous line and do it smartly because it actually uses a syntax tree. Um, so anyway, uh, we can talk about this more another time. If you're in the Discord, let me know. Uh, I've been told to shut up. So I guess we're done.